In 1999, the city of Eau Claire struggled to provide adequate computer services to all of its widely scattered facilities. We've got uh, facilities all over the community. We've got fire stations, we've got maintenance facilities. We've got parks facilities. The city hall is, is in one part of town, on our police departments in the courthouse in another part of town. And, and without our own private network, we're kind of stuck with servers, little data centers sprinkled throughout the community and, and, and no one can share a common application. So, so many, many years ago we realized that what was available here locally from private telecoms did not provide the type of connectivity we needed between our own facilities. And in, in about that same point in time we were, we were kind of struggling with the Y2K issue. Uh, and we were meeting with local IT directors had got together for a breakfast uh, once or twice a month to talk about like issues that we're dealing with. And so we had, uh, it was public representation at that point, city and county government, the university, technical college here in the Chippewa Valley, uh, K-12, which uh, Ms. Cisa 10, we're K-12 support uh, group. So there's about eight of us that get together about once a month for breakfast and talk, well, what are these common problems? And the common thing that kept coming up was, you know, if we could be connected, we could start sharing some of these applications. We could share payroll. We could share financial systems, document imaging. Well, Y2K came and went successfully. We figured out that it was, number one, kind of fun to have lunch once, once in a while. And, and, but number two, you know, there's some things we, we've really learned off each other here. Everyone was going through an application type review, uh, possibly a replacement. And at that point in time, that's when we realized that, you know, we really need to buy some of these applications together. The city and the county at the time were looking at document imaging systems. We've got piles and piles of public records, and, and when you're a public entity, you've got to keep everything for public records request. Uh, so we were looking, uh, you know, at buying a document imaging system, and the stuff that we want that would really solve our problem was so expensive. And we thought, wow, I don't, I, we just didn't think it was going to happen. But meeting with Eau Claire County says, you know, we got the same problem. To share applications, the city and the county needed to be connected by high-speed broadband. The city soon found out that other organizations were also planning to install fiber optic cable. The city controls the access to all the right-of-way in our community. If someone wants to bury conduit for telecommunications or fiber, they have to get a permit. And about the same time we got a notification from one of our vendors, uh, we also got a notification from one of our our local medical facilities, and it just kind of worked out. We put the university, we put uh, Luther Hospital, we put AT&T, and the city all in the room at the same time, and we thought, what if we shared this common path? What if we dug this trench together, and all that cost of the putting in this conduit, we could share that cost? And of course, the city looks at it, we won't be digging up the streets, you know, three, four, five times. Once connected with high-speed fiber optic cable, the city and county governments could share a single document imaging system. We went jointly, uh, bought a shared document imaging system that's, that's a world-class system. This is almost 10 years ago, and we're still using it. Since then, the network has been built a little at a time based on who needs what when and the resources that are available or the opportunities that are available. And once again, with this proof of concept... To continue the work of connecting their community, the group formed an organization called SYNC, which grew to include 14 institutions. You take the publics in the community and, uh, and nonprofits, and they serve as anchor points for bringing you know, large-scale networking into the, into the community. We do something in planning, and we call it a bubble map. And we say, what section or, or piece of a network that we're proposing to build has, has impact on you? And so we look around the table until we see how many hands are going to raise. And boy, boy, that would benefit just about everybody. We say, OK, then we've got to figure out how we can share that cost. You're working together for a common goal. You know, the common goal may be that we want a connection on, over there across town, as do three other members of SYNC. So we're all going to throw in our resources together to get over there. If you happen to need a driveway off of that main road, if you happen to have a school here or a clinic here, then you're responsible for that on that bubble map. That's a bubble of a different color and it's got your name on it. You pay for your own driveway, so to speak. So we have common costs that we capitalize and then we have our little driveway costs. 
But it, it, it's a system that's worked for us very well for, for a decade. And so we've been able to, in a nutshell, we've been able to capitalize all these projects. Once the construction takes place, the network cabling shows up in the various locations and it's up to the individuals then to put the electronics on either end to make it work. The city of Chippewa Falls here, in I believe it was 2005, we built out a network here simply because it was economically feasible to do it. My first connection to Chippewa Falls' network uh, cost me $40,000. It was basically a five-year amortization of the fee I was already paying you know, a provider to be hooked to that. So we simply said, no, we'll pay this money up front, we'll depreciate that over five years, and it's the same price. And just about everybody on the network does it the same way. But then connecting our two communities, Chippewa Falls and Eau Claire, was always a real problem because that was a big ticket item. Our nonprofit healthcare providers found out that we were interested in that. They had the same types of interests. We've got facilities in both, and we were able then to put together enough resources to get that network built. Sacred Heart Hospital in Eau Claire and St. Joseph's Hospital in Chippewa Falls are now connected with high-speed cable, allowing them to share applications and equipment. Data from patient monitors in both hospitals is recorded and compiled by a single server. So we've really tried to unify our hospitals together to try to make sure that um, instead of buying two of everything or three of everything and so forth, to run really as one single IT solution and being able to have the broadband have not only the bandwidth but the redundancy to be able to tie together medical systems, back-end storage systems, telephone systems or video systems communication systems, uh, lots of different pieces of, of the overall technology infrastructure to run our hospitals and clinics. And we can move any size image set of data, and we do up to 5,000 uh, images in a series. The hookup between Sacred Heart and St. Joe's uh, by fiber optic between those two facilities makes it like it's one department. Every radiologist that belongs to the radiology hub has services from the local cable provider in their home that attach back to our sync network. It's a great public-private partnership. We run minimum of 20 meg feeds into our homes, so there wasn't two people that had to be in the hospital at any given time. I have a nice room where I read stuff at night or on the weekend when I'm on call. It's a tremendous advancement. This isn't about Google and shopping at Land's Inn or things like that, you know, going to Amazon.com. This is about being able to move data and big files from one point to another, um, like MRIs and CTs and things like that. We're running our sync network at speeds of a gigabit, okay, a thousand, a thousand megabits. That's what speed we're running on this network, whether it be a stoplight, okay, or a major institution. That's the lowest common denominator for us. Some of it's higher speed. By putting in our own private network, our own private fiber network, where bandwidth and is, there's no limits what kind of communications we can have between facilities, we could bring all these, all these servers back, we could standardize equipment, start sharing these applications and, and save money on support and spend much more of our time uh, researching uh, new technologies that advance our city's mission. The fiber is such a small, that's the one that gets all the, all the recognition. You know, we put this big network in, but really it's the applications that run on the network are the key thing. That's where the savings are, and that's the biggest impact on our citizens. We've got over 30 schools in CESA 10, and we also have other school districts outside that we can now serve with some data applications that makes it cost effective. For instance, we support a business uh, services package that costs, oh, you know, roughly $35,000 to capitalize, maybe ongoing s stuff of uh, $15,000 a year. We could put multiple schools on one of these uh, servers and cut their costs less than in half. So we planned on maybe serving five or six schools this way. Now we're serving about 30 statewide doing that. We're probably serving another 20 statewide on student information systems. It's just fun to watch, you know, these meetings unfold and watch what everybody can bring to the table and see what kind of outcomes you can get by, by uh, saying here's the problem we want to solve and the outcomes that we'd like to have and then trying to work together to see who can bring all the pieces of the puzzle together to actually get to that result. I think it's contagious and it's a good, and it's a good contagious. 
you know, people say, well, how can you possibly operate? And well, like any relationship, sometimes there's a little shouting around the table, and, but we're persistent enough to know that there's good, there's good in that, and next week we can, we can try again. But I think that overall, if you ask any one of the individual members in sync, um, nobody could have done what we've done alone. Uh, there is no amount of resources that exist in the medical community to do all of what we've done uh, by ourselves. So I think we wouldn't be the better for trying to go it alone. When you want to share applications and really follow your mission to keep costs down and provide the best possible service, it's the only way. It really is.